Let it go, let it go. Why can't you just let it go? Superman was bad, but so was Transformers 4. You're listening to That Gets My Goat. I thought you were better than that. Hi, everybody. This is Big Anklevich. And this is Rish Outfield. And this is That Gets the hell out of here. <laughs> My goat. We went all the way over to this location so that we wouldn't have to deal with stuff like that. And yet the, a, a loud truck followed us to this abandoned parking lot so that it could drive by with the, a non-working muffler. Oh, and now he's turning around in our direction. Oh, he's coming back for more. He's probably going to ram the car <laughs> and kill us. Oh, he stopped. Oh, great. He's getting out. He's got a knife. Oh. Yeah, but he's got Bud Light. <laughs> oh, that was a good commercial. <laughs> uh, what are we going to talk about tonight? Uh, I was thinking it would be interesting because we had this conversation over the phone the other day. And I thought, you know what? We should do this as that gets my goat. Because a couple weeks ago, we, we were getting together to record. And I think it was raining that day. But you showed up to meet me. And you had a bunch of egg all over the, the hood of your car. And I was like, whoa, you got, like, egg on your car, man. And you're like, yeah, I figured the rain would wash it off, so I didn't do anything. But apparently that didn't work out for you, right? Right. While I was driving toward you, I got egged by a couple of teenagers in the dark. And I assume they were teenagers. They might have been 50-year-olds. But uh, one hit my windshield, and then another one hit the hood of my car. And there's just this big liquid white smear you know what I mean? Hitting your windshield, it effectively blinds you until you can get it off. And of course, you know, I was turning on the the wipers and spraying and trying to... And the thing is, it's two weeks later and you can still see where egg has dried. And then, yeah, when I pulled up to meet you and you saw it on the hood of my car, you're just like, ooh, what is this? No and, means no. And I, I said, well, it's <laughs> raining. I assume that it, the rain will wash it off. And I assumed wrong. It's just it was some kind of baked on fungus that's still visible on my car, even though I did, you know, wash the car and use a, you know, a, a washcloth or a rag or whatever just to, to rub all the places where there was egg. You can still see little places I missed. Uh, and I think that night I was pretty furious. I don't know. No, that night you weren't furious at all. But you were telling about me about it later because I guess your friend Jeff came over and you were just ranting at him like oh how could somebody as you were trying to clean the crap off or whatever oh yeah that was the thing it was the next day i guess and i'd come out and i was scrubbing it off because the rain had not made it go away and i'm complaining about this thing that has been done to me and he said wow listen to you next you're going to be telling the kids to get off your lawn and that made me furious <laughs> suddenly i was just so angry at him and then at these damned kids. And so, yeah, I just, I was like, okay, how many eggs did you throw as a kid? Because I know Jeff, he couldn't have closed a book long enough to pick up an egg as a kid. And he's like, well, I, I, I was too afraid of my parents to do that. And I was like, yeah, exactly. You're not one of those guys that would have done that. And I'm not one of those guys that would have done that either. There's a certain kind of guy that does that. And three years later, they're raping your sister. <laughs> and... Uh, Maybe that was uncalled for. Maybe that was an overstatement. But it's just like, you know, it, you start with some... three years. It actually took more like five years. Ah, okay. Well, that makes it all right. Then. <laughs> I apologize for my uh, the opposite of exaggeration. <laughs> the funny thing was, yeah, he was telling me this on the phone. And I thought, yeah. <laughs> because I have. I, me and my friends had a thing for TPing people's houses, uh, high-impact TPing of people's houses for a while. Well, for, hey, for the Gino Morettos of the world, what is TPing? Okay, TP stands for toilet paper, mm. for those of you who uh, have never heard that abbreviation. And basically, that's just when you take a bunch of toilet paper rolls, you throw them in people's trees, you get the toilet paper all wrapped up in their tree... And it's hard to get down, obviously, because it gets all stuck up in there. 
and uh, generally people will do this to you know girls will go and TP the house of some guy that they got the crush on or something like that and it's generally a kind of a harmless thing that you do you know among your friends you'll TP some friend you know you go stay the night at one friend's house and go TP your other friend's house that didn't come Something like that is what people will generally do, but sometimes you just get too into it. And I guess that's what we probably did. We got a little too into it, and uh, yeah, we would go and we would TP people's houses, and we would, when we first started doing it, you know, we had like one egg for each of us to throw, and we would put all the toilet paper in their trees, and then as we were ready to go and run for it, we throw the eggs at their house and then we take off and we would usually scream as we ran down the street until we got back to it. Um, you would scream to draw attention to yourselves or you would scream because of the thrill of, ah, we're going to get caught, ah. It or was because of the thrill, because of the attention, kind of a little of it. You know, we, we just smashed the side of their house with eggs. So we figured we probably woke them up. So we might as well do the whole job and wake them all the way up by screaming as we run away. Or I don't know why we did it. We were like 13 years old, so there's not a good reason behind it. But uh, we started doing this, you know, with just like an egg per person. And then as time went by, we'd, we'd take like a dozen eggs and we'd each have six to throw or, or something like that. <laughs> and we would just overdo it. And on top of that... We didn't just stop with that. We had this thing that we would do. And there was this commercial. It was an acne product commercial where people were talking on this commercial about what they... This was a radio commercial at the time that I was 13. They were talking about the things that they did to keep from getting acne. And, you know, this girl would be like, I hang my head backwards over my side of my bed for 20 minutes every day. And the blood flow helps me not get acne. And the other goes, oh, I don't know why you do that. I use a lemon mayonnaise rinse on my face. And that phrase stuck out to us for some reason. I guess it's probably because we were putting, we, we would get a bag, uh, like a Ziploc bag, and we would basically just take a little squirt of all the different condiments in the fridge, mix them all together into this soup. And we called it the lemon mayonnaise rinse. And so... Usually when we would go TP somebody's house, we would now take a bag of this gunk, as well as a few eggs, and we'd start throwing the lemon mayonnaise rinse on the people's door, and then we'd throw all the eggs, and then we'd run for it. Do you have any idea how bad that stuff would smell? I mean, obviously oh, yeah, you did. It, it had to smell oh terrible. Oh, my Lord, dude, the and stink of, oh. That's kind of what we were after, I suppose. We never made it, like, I know there's lots of other things that you can do to inconvenience people. I know I've heard of like taking plastic forks and you stick like basically like just line their lawn with plastic forks everywhere cuz when you go to pull them out lots of them are just going to break. And I think maybe even what you're supposed to do is break them off so you can't get them out. So they got all these plastic forks stuck in their lawn that are always causing them trouble. We never did that, so at least I've got something, a silver lining or something. We didn't go that far. We didn't get that dumb. Um, but yeah, I felt bad as you were talking about how frustrated and upset you were. And I remember back in the day when we did this one time, we had TP'd this guy's house. And then the next day, my friend said he was walking by their house and he saw the dad of this family outside in their front door and he was scraping the lemon mayonnaise rinse off of their front door and this was removing the paint from his door as he scraped at it and I just thought oh my gosh are you serious lemon mayonnaise rinse can remove paint from somebody's door we might be taking this too far. I don't think that we were actually causing permanent damage to anybody's abode. I'd like to say that I never did it again after that, but I can't even say that, unfortunately. I'm sure we did it several other times because it was such a thing. 
that we were doing at the time. But yeah, that's one of those things that kind of freaks me out a little bit sometimes. Because I work in news, you know, we'll do stories about sometimes, oh, there's vandalism going on in this neighborhood. And they'll be like, mailboxes have been blown up in, you know, this neighborhood a bunch of times. And the police are looking for the vandals that are doing this. And I remember I had friends when I was in high school who loved to smash people's mailboxes. <laughs> they would go out and drive around and smash their mailboxes all the time. And I went with them one time and I have actually smashed a mailbox in my past. At least I only did it once, but yeah, just I see news stories where the police are after people who have done stuff that I did and I'm just thinking, was I really that bad? Was I juvenile hall worthy? <laughs> is that or is that just something that all kids do? I, I, apparently not all kids cuz you have no stories of doing these kind of things, right? Uh, well, you, I, you tipped I, cows. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever gone cow tipping, actually. <laughs> we lived in this tiny little place where everybody knew everybody. Everybody knew your dad. Everybody knew your last name and all that. And that makes things a little more difficult. Uh, you know, if you TP somebody's house, then you run away. The dad could... Say, I, you know, I think that that was Billy Anklovich. I'm going to call the <laughs> Anklovichs. I'm going to get Gary Anklovich on the phone and ask him if his son is home. And if his son isn't home, then we know that he did it. And so I, I thought it was part of it. But also I just, my friends were kind of introverted. We tended to be the people who would watch TV together. Or we would, you know, we would go for walks and tell ghost stories and and. We would imagine what it would be like if we were brave enough to go do those kind of things. Property damage wasn't your thing. There was one summer where my cousin, who lived in California, and I both went to work for my uncle in Las Vegas for a, like a month or so together. And I think that had we not had to get up at like 4.30 in the morning every morning, and so we were exhausted, we probably would have got up to a lot more trouble than we did, but... There was one night that we got up on the the wall overlooking like Sahara Boulevard or, or it was it was Rainbow, I think. And for some reason we dared one another to be naked on the wall and <laughs> shout feast your eyes. <laughs> and I did do this. Uh, I'm not sure that I've ever told anybody that. It just it was a it was a stupid, silly thing. Feast your eyes. I think that's what they said on Brave they when, did. He, when he moons him with the flips his kilt up. But when you say things like that, of you know, reading about people that you know, ooh, these poor kids got locked up for destroying somebody's mailbox or Molotov cocktailing a church, or whatever it is. I think about that as like, what if a cop car had driven by when we had done that? Surely that is against the law, what we did. And sometimes people get made examples of. And that's part of why we didn't get up to much trouble in our tiny little town was because you'd never live it down. And, and you know, I, I did make mischief and get in trouble at school and do things in my day. And they never let you forget it. <laughs> Ten years later, they was like, oh, yeah, well, you were the boy that did this. You were the boy that said, feast your eyes. I remember you. You know, the funny thing about that is you can, yeah, I mean, something like that flashing, you can get, and especially nowadays, because that's, I mean, I know somebody that I work with, her friends, or I don't know what the deal was exactly, but she got dared to like run through a crowd topless and she did this and was apprehended by the police and has a record as a sex offender oh no because of this to flash somebody this is a sexual crime to do such a thing and yeah she she has this and she was just barely over 18 and so she has now this on her permanent, permanent record. record. Oh, see, um, that's one of those things. They don't really use this term anymore. But in my day, they would have referred to that as a victimless crime. <laughs> and I, I recognize that that's not true. Because the victim from this particular crime has been this episode. 
<laughs> the enjoyment of our conversation is suddenly brought to a screeching halt when I think of this poor girl and the term sex offender creates a mind picture, does it not? You hear the term sex offender and you're thinking of something right now. And it's not a, a an 18 year old girl who is dared by her friends to do something silly, to do something harmless, to do something exciting or whatever. And that happens to be caught. And oh, that's just, that's a shame, man. I, I, and that's exactly why you're glad that you didn't get caught doing the stupid things that you did as a kid. And, and there were things that I did as a teenager that were so unthinkingly stupid <laughs> that I am lucky that I'm alive. And I think about them now as an adult and I just, my mind reels. I go, holy cow, how did I not kill us all? I, one time when I first got my driver's license, I thought it would be hilarious if my friends and I were all driving along the freeway and I put the van on cruise control and we all got in the back seat. So it was cruise controlling with not a single person driving it and we all got in the back seat and I was like, yeah, hey, okay, let's go. I think about that all the time because it's just like, Jesus, what was going through? Why would I, oh my, what, you know, how easily that could have had and that was the last time we ever saw those boys. Yeah, that's I, crazy. That's like, uh, I think they did that in, in Anchorman, the most recent Anchorman. I'm pretty sure I saw that on the uh, the trailer. He gets on there, he's like, no, it's got cruise control, so you can just do the, you know, whatever. And then he gets in the back seat or whatever, and then, of course, the car rolls. And I think they had a bunch of bowling balls and, like, Scorpions, oh, yeah, something crazy like that. I can't remember what it was. You know, I I did something kind. Of, I mean, it's not quite the same thing, but similar. And and I got pulled over by the cops, and I count myself damn lucky that I did. To tell you the truth, because the first time I ever drove through Montana was back in the in the time in Montana when they had a speed limit, which was. The speed limit is to drive reasonable and prudent. Oh, that's right. I remember driving through Montana when it's like, there's no speed limit. Here. Yeah, it didn't How have a speed limit. How fast can your car go? Really? Yeah. We can do that? Okay. That's what I thought the deal was. You know, I'm just like, oh, there's no speed limit. I can go as damn fast as I want to and F it all. And I did so. I was driving, I was actually driving my friend's car and this speedometer only went to 80. <laughs> And yeah, the the needle was tacked all the way over to the side and I was driving and I was use and I would go around and this is on the freeway, so you know just how gentle the curves are on the freeway. They're super gentle and slow and you never have to be, you know, you turn the wheel like a fraction of an inch is all you ever really turn the wheel as you go around these curves. I was going so fast that I was using both lanes of the freeway as I'd go around these curves. I'd be on the inside lane, I would drift all the way through the outside lane and come back into the inside lane as I turned these, you know, gentle curves of the freeway because I was going so fast. And all of a sudden this cop pulls me over. And yeah, he comes up, he's like, yeah, get your hands on the wheel where I can see him, you know. He's sure I'm effed up in here. So he comes over and he's like, I clocked you, I think I was going 110, if I remember right, when he stopped me. And he's like, what are you doing going 110? I'm like, there's no speed limit. Of course I'm going 110. Isn't everybody? And he's like, no, the speed limit is reasonable and prudent. And 110 is not reasonable or prudent. You know, and at the time I was just like, there's no speed limit. Why would he pull me over? This is effed up. Luckily, because there's no speed limit, I didn't get like a $800 ticket for going 50 miles over the speed limit or something like that. Because there was no speed limit, so they could just say, well, here, $75 pay. But, uh, yeah, it... But you're grateful I, for this. I count see. myself lucky that this guy pulled me over because I was not... I mean, he's right. I wasn't driving reasonably or prudent. And I think it was only a matter of time before I... Did, killed the two the two of us that were in that car that car was about to roll going 110 miles an hour and when you roll your car going 110 miles an hour nobody gets out except for in you know small grocery bag size chunks 
So I'm really glad that this guy did pull me over because like you who got out of the driver's seat and sat in the back seat while the car was going, you were that close to being dead. Luckily, nothing happened when you did that. And same with me. I, I managed to keep it on the road and didn't do anything stupid while I was going 110 miles an hour. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad <laughs> that uh, that's the case. You know, it's funny, too, that you mentioned Molotov co cocktailing somebody's church, I think you said at one point. I had friends, now they didn't do it to a church, they were just, they actually made Molotov cocktails and went out and threw them in the street for fun. Now, the first time that they did this, I was at the house and I could, I could have been out there with them doing it, but I had fallen asleep. And they got bored of, of lighting my socks on fire while I slept. And so they went out and they put together themselves a Molotov cocktail. They poured gasoline in a bottle, put like a bunch of paper sticking out the top as a wick. They went out, they lit it, and then they threw it in the street and watched it blow up. And they thought it was so neat that the next time they got together and spent the night at each other's house, they did it again. And they brought their video camera along to film themselves doing this. <laughs> Because that's awesome. Well, today it would be YouTube. We'll put it on YouTube. Yeah. But, oh, don't do that. Don't put yourself breaking the law on YouTube. It's really dumb. But you know that stuff happens every single day. Yeah, and the people who do it eventually wind up charged. So don't do it. It's really, really dumb. If you're going to do something really dumb and illegal, don't put it on YouTube. <laughs> Okay, because seriously, YouTube is available for anybody to watch. Anyways, get back to the point of the story. Yeah, they took they took the video camera with them. They video and it was one of those. This was an old camera already, so I'm not that old of a person. But this was one of those cameras where the camera was actually separate from the recorder. Mm. You had like a little bag that you put over your shoulder that had like this mini VCR in it. And your camera had a cable that came out the back of it and attached to the VCR. So you started the tape recording and then you would use your camera as a camera. This is how old this camera and how bulky and in the way this thing was. So they did this. They went out. They threw a couple of these. I think what they would do is throw it at one end of the street. And then they would run down to the other end of the street, which was yeah, a ways away throw it at that end of the street and then they'd run back to his house go in made some more went back out again to these same ends of the street and threw them again and the second time i think at the second end of the street they got caught a neighbor comes out hey what are you guys doing and they tried to run for it this dumb camera is in the way they're getting caught my friend is trying to stash the camera under the bush somehow and luckily for my friends, the guy who caught them knew him well. And so they called his parents instead of calling the police. And so all he got was grounded instead of going to juvenile detention. I mean, these days he'd probably be up for, uh, like, terrorism charges or some something like that. I don't know what the deal would be. Stupid things that, that kids can get up to. And they didn't, at least they never, they just threw it in the middle of the street where there was nothing to hit. So they weren't as dumb as they could be. But yeah, it's amazing the vandalism that you can get up to without even considering that, hey, this is really dumb and I'm going to go to jail if somebody catches me. I'm going to go to detention. Luckily, nobody I know went to detention, although one of my friends did get arrested because we used to think it was funny to light fires in our lockers at school. <laughs> it wasn't our lockers, it was like unused lockers that were nearby. Yeah, we used to every now and then just light a fire in the locker and then walk away and see what people would do before they finally put it out. And one time, uh, yeah, they lit it and it, it went for a ways and then yeah, it became this big deal where like the custodians came running out with like fire retardant spray and they sprayed it all over it and stuff like that and then they were kind of trying to figure out who did it and eventually this friend of mine went and he confessed and yeah he got they had brought a policeman out and actually arrested him for starting a fire which i guess wait why did he confess 
Because it's good for the soul? I suppose. Because he's a good boy. Because we weren't hooligans like you, like you... Maybe we sound like we were, but we weren't really... I mean, we weren't actual hooligans. There were actual hooligans in our school that would do actual, you know, stuff with malice. But in general, we were just dorking around. And, yeah, when we realized we'd overdone it, I don't know. But, yeah, so this friend of mine, yeah, he, he confessed. I suppose his parents told him he had to or whatever. I don't know what the deal was. But, yeah, he got arrested. I mean, it's not like they took him to the jail and threw him in there and he had one phone call or anything. They just came out and they read him his rights or whatever. And then he had to do community service at the school, like help the custodian every day after school for a month or something like that. As part of his uh, punishment. I was a little bummed because I think, if I remember right, the locker that he lit the fire in was the one... It was either the one underneath mine or next to mine. So all my crap got covered in the fire retardant powder that they sprayed in there to put out the, the fire. And oh, they stank for the rest of the year. Every book that I had, you know, and you get those books from the school... And then if you turn it back in all messed up, they'll, like, charge you for it and stuff. And, and it was a bad smell. But, uh, yeah, that's the worst it ever got, I guess, was the one guy who got arrested for starting a fire. But it could have been so much worse. I mean, how stupid is that? We were lighting fires in lockers in a school. I don't know if that made it on the news, but I know, now that I work in the news, that if any hint of this made it out of the school... It would have been on the news. We would have had a freaking reporter there and they would have been asking all the kids, oh my gosh, there was a fire in a locker. What was it like? You must have been almost dead, right? Schools are the scariest places in the world, right? Because parents are afraid to let their kids go there by themselves. And so many things, so many dumb things that me and my friends got up to when we were kids. Luckily, none of us wound up in... Uh, serious trouble but yeah it, it, it's weird now i'm a parent how do i do i've got a kid now who's 13 what would i do if i found out that he was throwing lemon mayonnaise rinses at our neighbor's doors i don't know how i would do i mean for one how do you deal with it because i did it when i was a kid and i you know i'm fine it was just you know kids getting up to mischief just good old boys doing their things. Never meaning no harm. Oh, wait, that's something else. <laughs> How would I deal with that if I found out that my son was doing that? If I was worried that I was going to have to spend hundreds of dollars to replace somebody's door, I know that I would be very upset because I don't have money to waste like that. But, you know, if it's harmless stuff. I know that, like, for example, when I was... On the football team, the cheerleaders, as just kind of their deal, every homecoming game, like the night before the homecoming game, all the cheerleaders would go out, and they had like a list, I guess, and split up in groups, and they would TP all the football players' houses the night before homecoming game. But it was, it was the kind of TPing that I was talking about at the start, where it's harmless. They just threw some toilet paper in your tree they didn't <laughs> fork our lawn or throw eggs at our house or anything like that it was just the harmless kind of thing that you know eventually the rain's gonna get all that toilet paper out of your tree even if you can't and that's fine if that's what my kid was up to i wouldn't be upset and if some you know douchebag parent is calling me your son tp'd my house and then i went and looked at him like, yeah but it's just toilet paper what's your problem i could understand that but yeah when when it crosses the line which i crossed i would recommend that they not do that it's funny because i remember in middle school drawing a comic book where it was all about like the students going to war with the teachers basically the teachers were cobra and the students were G.I. Joe is what it came down to. But that kind of crap would be considered like a kill list or something like that today. You know, you'd get arrested and charged with terrorism 
and they would just assume you were the Columbine kid or something like that if you were caught. Yeah, they have a zero tolerance policy for stuff like that, even if it's... Okay, okay I had a keyboarding class. It was basically typing on a, you know, an electric typewriter. And I hated the teacher so much. I still hate her all these years. But I did a, a drawing of her in an electric chair and me at the switch. But instead of the switch, it was a an electric typewriter that would electrocute her. And she saw that and, and took it from me. And yeah, I had to talk to the assistant principal and my parents had to come. And, and it was a humiliating thing. I, I think that there was a specific word that rhymes with the rich that was on the, the drawing that may have oh. been what they considered worse than uh, than what the drawing depicted. But I think nowadays they'd be like, you know, this is a uh, a threat. Yeah, this is not uh, laughing matter in any way. Our tolerance for that sort of thing has gone way way down. And rightly so. I mean, I understand. I'm, yeah, maybe you know, I shouldn't say rightly so, but, well, in our but it's day, understandable why they have to. They can't make exceptions and take context into it, even yeah. though I'm a big believer in context. And I think if it were my kid, I would be like, you know, I see, I see what you're doing here, and you're letting off steam, and and she is a bitch, but you got to understand that they can't. They have to take everything like this seriously, and you know. You're being put to death tomorrow morning. And, uh, yeah. It, in our day, there was no such thing as school shootings. Uh, I don't think that had ever... I mean, maybe it had. Maybe somebody had taken a gun to school and shot somebody. But definitely not mass shootings. It just wasn't something that had happened. And so, you know, they didn't, ha they didn't worry like that. They just assumed, oh, yeah, this is just kids not liking their teacher and complaining and doing their thing they just do a drawing or whatever but yeah since it's happened again and again and again yeah they don't they don't accept that kind of stuff anymore and yeah like i said i did that i drew this comic book i would have been arrested been on tv as i go to my court appearances as they say this guy threatened to kill all these teachers at his school when all I was doing was making a dumb comic book where the kids went to war with their teachers. Go, Joe. <laughs> um, yeah, there's so many things that just don't fly anymore that I did as a kid. And, um... Well, it's a different time. And, uh... It's a different there are, world. There are bad the kids from. who really do take it to the extreme or, or I, I guess you would say they've ruined it for the rest of us but it's just you know it just there there were things that the, the world that we live in now where you have to have a passport to go to Tijuana is different than the world we grew up in because of because it's harder to get drugs now it, it is a little bit harder <laughs> um, but it's just that sort of thing it's like you know it's it, it's, a, it's because of what has happened and and, and yeah it's too bad and you and I are able to wistfully remember the times that we went down to TJ and it really burned when we urinated afterward but you know I, I guess if our kids can't do that so easily they have to photoshop a passport themselves and print it out and then use their their label maker or whatever to make it look <laughs> official <laughs> yeah it's definitely a different world you know it's funny because there's a guy that I work with who actually retired he retired at one station where he's getting a pension and now he's working at our station so he's double dipping as they say he's getting paid twice now because he works every day plus he gets his pension from the other place yeah i was giving him a hard time calling him old one time and he was just like you know what that's fine you can say that if you want i had a good life i did all sorts of stuff i'm glad that i grew up when i grew up because it was great. It's way better than it is now. I don't want to be young because I got the best, you know, my life was the best time to grow up. And I, I grew up in like friggin' Mayberry. It was just idyllic. I have to say that I, I agree. I'm glad that I grew up when I grew up. I grew up in a simpler time. And I wouldn't want to, as much as I'd love to be young, to, to have a young body anyways. I wouldn't want to have to 
grow up now to get it. I'm glad to have grown up when I did. And heck, the 80s were better than any other decade, so <laughs> there's that too. But, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad that it, things were the way they were. I was able to become the person that I am by going through the experiences that I did. Even though I regret some of those things, I wish we hadn't taken the paint off that guy's door or, you know, egged. I don't know if we ruined people's houses throwing eggs at them. I know that I ruined somebody's mailbox the time that I did that. And I feel bad for all those things. I, I wish I hadn't done them. But uh, sometimes peer pressure and, and other things takes you in places that you probably wouldn't have gone to otherwise. But uh, Yeah, see, I think about myself standing on that wall in Las Vegas, Nevada. <laughs> and I, I think, well, I hope some people got a good laugh out of that. <laughs> Nowadays, you'd be like, I, I, I didn't look. I, didn't, I swear I didn't see that. I'm not a pervert. <laughs> All those people who take pictures of their underage junk. And, then, and it's not all those people. It's very few that ever get into trouble over it. But when they do, you know, it's chi disseminating child porn or whatever. It's yeah. Just like, oh, man. Yeah. Somebody gets made an example of, and it's not fair that that one person got but uh then we wouldn't have stories i guess I, I i don't know all right well i think we're done here i've said my piece yes and I, my I think conscience we, is clear oh, yeah. <laughs> confession is good for the soul sir. <laughs> so i will uh ask you to to stay uh three hail jk rowlings and uh, all right sorry maybe that's uh, offensive to somebody i i apologize there's 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 no hails going on hail no that's right. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. I'm again. All right. Walk the straight and narrow. I do my shot for you. Hey, that ain't funny, man. That gets my goat is produced under a Creative Commons non-commercial 3.0 license. Big and rich a national treasure, man. <laughs>